Hey guys, it is March 3rd, 2019. I came across a documentary that I want to recommend that you watch, Plugged In, The True Toxicity of Social Media Revealed. Richard Grannon, Spartan Life Coach, you know, when your channels get terminated by YouTube over and over again, you lose so many of those that you subscribe to. Richard Grannon, yeah, I was listening to this documentary and I was thinking, okay, I know that voice, I know that voice, and well, then you see Richard Grannon. Um, and I really, years and years ago, Richard Grannon, um, I was watching and I, I haven't seen him in years, so I'm going to recommend that you subscribe to his channel. Those of you who want to grow, those of you who are working through your unresolved issues, but especially those of you who are the victims, and that is the right term to use, a victim of a pathological narcissist especially if you are the scapegoat of a narcissist and well you have complex PTSD lots of words of wisdom from Richard Grannon and no I do not agree with everything that someone says the same is true for Richard Grannon but he really well, you should check them out. And I'm saying that because I still get comments from people leaving comments underneath my narcissism videos. And recently, and I've captured those comments, and I've been wanting to post videos on, you know, comments. And I don't know what is going on with me, guys. I'm just not myself. But for those who are suffering, and that is the right description. Um, you have had to live the effects of the narcissist? Then please check out Richard Grannon, and I think if nothing else, you will certainly get that you are not alone, that there are ways to um, heal and there are a lot of things that you may not be aware of that you can do to lessen the attacks from the narcissist. Disengaging is the uh, most important, but a lot of people can't disengage for you know whatever the reason is. So he also speaks of, well, if you can't disengage, here is what you can do. One thing, limit, limit your engagement with the narcissist. The pathological narcissist differs from this, um, you know, the narcissist we call, you know, we, our language is when people speak, they don't really think in terms of being precise. Um, so we call a lot of people narcissists. Well, they may have narcissistic tendencies, um, I think we see that now in uh, many Americans. This this is how we grow up. We've grown up in a narcissistic culture, and uh, we we develop these narcissistic tendencies. Um, but you know, it's like the selfie culture and all that. It differs from the pathological narcissist that is out to get their target. This is why I really identify with targeted individuals because I know, you know, I have the malignant narcissistic mother, sister, brother, and I know. Unfortunately, I didn't know for a long time, so they put my life into this head-spinning Kafka-esque life, and I learned too late. They can do a lot of destruction the malignant narcissist especially. Beware, 
Don't take them lightly. Do all the research to understand what they are about. If you don't, your life can very well be destroyed by them and you'll live that destruction. That's what you want to avoid. So, this documentary, let's listen to just a few minutes. We're now beings that crave community and purpose, and we have no community. We've destroyed our own communities. We have no purpose. We've destroyed all sense of purpose. We are rudderless. We are objectiveless. We have no destination to sail to. And as a consequence of that, we just turn on each other and turn on ourselves. And it's very, very painful. It's a, a very strange and dislocated time in which people find themselves completely isolated, even as they're surrounded by others, because we cannot offer the quality of time and attention and conscious awareness to each other because we're giving it to the great big shiny God that we carry around inside of our pockets that we all bow to each and every day. Yeah, and look at how white that sky is. Um, the matrix. So many people are now enslaved in the tech matrix. And a lot of you have left comments, you know, talking about that. Okay, well, did you hear him? We have destroyed community. We've also destroyed family. We are destroying humanity. Those characteristics of the human being are fading away. We have an obligation to bring them back, to give them life again. You know, when you think about the older generation who knows what life was like before even the remote phone, before even answering machines, it was a whole, it, it was entirely different than what we are living now. Now we have generations of people growing up never knowing what that was like. All the opportunities we had as kids, you know, we didn't have, you know, these um, video games, we didn't have gaming, we didn't have screens, you know, to carry around. Um, we weren't forced into public schools with Wi-Fi blasting over our heads. We didn't have social media. What did we do? We went out and played with our friends. We were outside playing, uh, engaged in sports with one another. Um, and well, for some families that the kids who were fortunate enough to have uh, relatively healthy parents they sat down at a dinner table, they talked about their day, they engaged with one another, and those children learned how to communicate and relate to one another. Okay, well, I now know that an awful lot of people, when they even get together on the holidays, most people are just staring at their phones, they're, they're a screen, the god that they bow down to. Um, you walk into a store and so many people are just chatting away. They don't even recognize that you're there and that they may be annoying you with their conversation, that they're just speaking in like a normal voice. And it's, it's madness now out in the world. I, and I think most of you know, I would be really happy and I would do it in a heartbeat, boom, go back to that day before even the answer, answering machine. Um, I do not like the cyber world. I um, And I knew, I kind of intuitively knew, but I wouldn't, I, I couldn't really communicate it then, but I saw when they were saying, oh, the computer, the internet, it's going to make you know, our lives better. Um, people are going to 
be able to um, relate even better. Um, they'll be able to stay in contact with one another. It's just going to be fabulous and everything is just going to be, you know, done uh, with efficiency and it's going to be fast, you know, for businesses with the computer. Everything has turned out the exact opposite. The exact opposite. So let's just listen to a few minutes in the beginning here. Community. We've destroyed our... Sorry. Our communities. We have this day and time where you're almost not surprised that this is occurring? You know, I'm so glad that you brought this up, and I do see a connection between teen depression and social media in my practice. I mean, teen suicide has gone up a lot in the last 10 to 20 years. It's been a, basically a 50% increase in females under the age of 17, and a 30% increase in boys under the age of 17. Society has been gradually darkened by this scheme in which everyone is under surveillance all the time and everyone is under this mild version of behavior modification all the time. It's made people jittery and cranky. It's made uh, teens especially depressed, which can be quite severe. And it is a point in time where people need to hard break from some of these tools and the things that you rely on. The short-term dopamine-driven feedback loops that we have created are destroying how society works. That thought process was all about how do we consume as much of your time and conscious attention as possible. Yeah, if I'm feeling down then I'll look on those things and I'll just make it worse or I might be feeling fine and then I'll look at social media and then like plateau and just feel yeah really anxious about how I look or um, what I'm doing, what I'm not doing. Facebook, Twitter, all these networks are surfing the wave. They know it's a dangerous wave. They know people are drowning. They read all the statistics of increased suicide rate, depression, anxiety. They know absolutely everything. They have designed maliciously, malevolently, and possibly criminally, I don't know. They have designed their algorithms and their networks exactly to cater to human pathology in its most extreme forms. The idea of validation, it's constantly wanting to be validated. I want to post this, I want to block it, I want to say this, this, because you constantly want the validation. The likes like a dopamine hit, you constantly, constantly just wanting validation. I think that, so you put things out there that you know, you know you don't necessarily believe in or you, you, isn't in line with your moral compass, but you'll put things because you know it might get like. Um, I just hate that if you cry for help, it's attention seeking. If you message your friends, they're too busy. If you look on the profiles, they're having an amazing time, and none of it is, is true. The rates of depression and anxiety among teenagers have increased by 70% in the past 25 years. The number of children and young people turning up in accident and emergency departments with a psychiatric condition has more than doubled since 2009. And in the past three years, Hospital admissions for teenagers with eating disorders have also almost doubled. So, yeah, um, we have a problem. We've got a problem. And anybody denying that... Uh, we have a problem with humanity, what is happening to the human being, the human being in the aggregate, and how all of those human beings contribute to this nightmare that we are living, then if you're denying that, you're the problem. Um, you know, when I watch documentaries like this, and I think about social media, and I think about the cell phone, and I, you know, it's... Um, I think about my experiences with people uh, in my generation, you know, baby boomers, who were even older than I was. I remember a friend asking if she could come along on one of my walks with my dogs in the woods. My, and, and she knew that that was like oh, where I went, you know, if I could find any peace, it would be there, the quiet, the sounds of nature, all that. She knew it. 
she we're walking in the woods her phone rings and I'm like oh god um, she answers it and she starts yakking away for quite a long time and I'm looking at her and I'm thinking do you even are you aware of what you're doing are you aware that I am here are you aware that you have just disrupted you know the time that we were spending together completely unaware and I would then have to say if you want to go along with me on a walk please leave your cell phone behind well I've said that to a lot of people I remember a couple of years ago I was <clears throat> maybe starting a friendship with some guy who was in his late 30s and he came over one day and he sat down and he asked me a question and I started to answer what did he do he went into his bag he took out this pad as I'm talking to him he takes out this pad and I see the finger you know scrolling on the screen and I'm like okay uh hello <laughs> are you here I said what are you doing I'm checking my emails well I can't remember exactly you know what I said what he said but it was very tense for a while because I said when you're with me could you not do that um, that was enough for him to just jump up. I triggered something from his past, you know, um, and, you know, I stayed with it and, all right, he, everything, you know, we just calmed down. We went out for lunch and that was it. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I know that a lot of people in my generation can. That's how they interact now. I walk around here. Um, I might be going to throw out some garbage and I see neighbors that they're apparently visiting with one another they're sitting like in a circle and every one of them is staring at their phone these are people in my generation you know over 60 and some a little bit younger this is how they relate. I don't know how to relate that way. I don't know how to relate that way. And when you are doing that, when you are with somebody else, but you are looking, staring at that phone or answering the phone or, oh, I got a text and now I got to text that person back. You are telling the person that you are with that they don't matter, that they're not that important you're telling them you're not all that interested in them so what this technology has done is it has only exacerbated the destruction of community the destruction of human relating you know, we are relational beings which means we're supposed to be relating with one another not that friggin screen on that smartphone um, and each time we do this we create a world that gets darker and darker and darker we have an obligation to one another whether you feel it or not we do we have a responsibility to one another and that responsibility entails that we don't hurt one another harm one another and that entails that every individual needs to be aware of what they are doing in the world how they are behaving how they are treating one another um, parents you have a responsibility to bring up your children 
so that they will be adults who can be healthy adults and form healthy, trusting relationships um, that they are capable of having intimate uh, friendships, intimate um, relationships. That's your job as a parent. But what do I hear very often from people? Their family comes over and they sit staring at their screens. Holidays, you have people sitting staring at their screens, not engaged with one another. So nobody really knows what is going on. You know, it's like the idea of relating to one another, looking at one another's eyes. First of all, there's an awful lot of communication going on um, that when you're staring at a screen, you are, well, you're certainly not listening to the person who's there with you, but you're also missing, you know, everything that is taking place, non-verbal communication. So very often what happens is someone will say something and because you have been distracted with something else, you've taken it the wrong way. You misinterpret that. That causes friction, you know, within the relationship. Uh, that's what you get a lot on social media, in the comment section, in emails. Um, but because, you know, we now have... And it's interesting because the social engineering, the destruction of community and family and yada, 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 came first. Technology has thoroughly destroyed it. And it is our responsibility to behave in ways, you know, to every day live to try to bring all of that back. If we don't, if we don't engage in something to try to bring back community, heal the family dysfunction, uh, then we are absolutely part of the problem. Um, you know, parents, you need to sit down with your children and talk to them. Get off your cell phone. Get off your... Don't allow your kids to have that cell phone at the dinner table. Have real communication. Um, you know, so many now lack human characteristics. They don't know how to relate to one another. They don't know how to communicate with one another. They don't know how to communicate clearly, precisely. They, they are, but it, all of this is causing terrific madness. You know, they, um, the younger generations, because they've been staring at this, this is all they know. And yes, they've grown up in families where it's been permitted. So you have an awful lot of people who do not know how to relate, but lack the empathy, um, lack the uh, communication ability, lack the capacity for understanding um, one another. You know, when we're relating to one another as we used to, we learn about ourselves. We learn the truth about the people that we are involved with. It seems as if all of that has just gone by the wayside. Nobody really cares. So uh, we need to start thinking about what we are doing. Um, parents need to start thinking about what they are doing to their children with this technology. But we also have to begin to understand the detrimental effect that it is having. Yes, children now are killing themselves. The percentage of children killing themselves has so increased. Every adult needs to think about that. What is happening to our society that children are killing themselves at young ages more and more often? 
Why? Because we've created a world that is meaningless. These children are rudderless, which is what um, Richard Grannon states in that little clip that I just showed you. Yes, community's gone, but we have destroyed it. And when you recognize your own power, your own contribution in destroying that, you then begin to think of ways that you can bring it back. If you can destroy it, you can certainly recreate it, right? Which means that you've got to do things that are difficult. You've got to get out and talk to your neighbors. It's hard today, really hard, because, well, when I do, I have my neighbors staring at their phone. I have a few interactions, you know, with people without that phone, but mostly it's they're on that phone. Um, you talk to people, and you know, I can just imagine the response, which is, "What are you doing? Why are you doing this?" You know, it's kind of like people are now so frightened because they've been so conditioned, so conditioned with this social media that they don't even know how to relate. And, oh, someone sees me. Someone is actually engaging me, looking in my eyes. They, they're not aware of what is taking place in their subconscious, but they feel vulnerable because we've lost that ability. And when people are vulnerable, very often what they do is attack. You know, they, they like, instead of recognizing their own vulnerability, they will think you're weird. You know, you're the weird one. It's not weird. <laughs> it's what, it, it's how we need to um, bring back community and know one another and know who we live with and everybody just, yeah, now drive home, go into the garage, go into their home. You don't see kids playing, you know, out in the backyard or in the front yard. All of this, all of this is um, absolutely 100% contributing to the nightmare. Contributing to the nightmare. We have got to look at our own contribution to this nightmare. When you have someone visiting you, put down that cell phone. Because you really are communicating a message to them. I don't give a shit about you. You're incidental here. What's really important is that screen I'm staring at. And it's a great distraction and a great escape for an awful lot of people. So, uh, the link is below. I hope you watch it. I hope you get something from it. I hope you circulate it. And I do hope that you are someone who is engaged in trying to bring back or trying to prevent you know, the human race from killing itself off. Because what he said there, we've destroyed community, we don't have a purpose anymore, we're rudderless, and when that happens, then we go after one another. Well, I've experienced that. That is happening. And, yeah, it is our responsibility to grow and and do the work necessary so that we have greater and greater awareness of how we are behaving in the world. Without that, you can kiss everything goodbye. Link is below.